So I recently got a fair bit of grief about recommending core range bottles as a good investment. And in the video, probably the best whiskey investments 2022, I recommend the Glen Farkless 30 year old and 40 year old. And people in the comments, uh, so most people get it, some people don't. Most people don't think it's a good investment because it's a core range bottle and they're like sort of like, well, why are you recommending a core range bottle? It's still available at retailers. It's still available at auction at a fair price. Why are you recommending it? And that got me sort of thinking about whether the fact whether core range bottles can be a good investment. And that's the point of this video. Now, what is a core range bottle? Well, a core range bottle is something like this, say Macallan 10 year old. It's something that's been on the market for a long, long time. It's always, well, it's now 12 year old, isn't it? But it's a product like these down walls that we'll put on the screen. Now, it's the standard offering from the distillery that sort of remains the same for a period of time. There are quite a few examples of core range bottles that have been proven to be excellent exceptional investments. And this is the first of a series of bottles called Core Range Kings. Now, these are Core Range bottles of whiskey that have proven to be an exceptionally good investment. And the first one that we're gonna talk about today, well, where should we do it? Should we do it here? Is this, let's just get the focus in going there, is this little beauty here. The Ardbeg Lord of the Isles. No matter which way you look at it, it's a fantastic bottle of whiskey. So let's delve into this bottle and see what makes it so special. Now, I know what some of you may be saying that the Ardbeg Lord of the Isles wasn't a core range bottle. Well, it absolutely was a core range bottle. It was released in 2001 and it was a standard release for six years. It ended in 2007. And the original RRP on that bottle, we'll stick it on screen now, was 100 pounds. So for 100 pounds, you could go to uh, the Ardbeg website and pick up these bottles of 25 year old whiskey. Now, we'll come to the whiskey in a moment, but first of all, let's take a look at this amazing box. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, and let's go onto the table here now, that this box might look a bit like the Money Musk Reliquary. Now, what, you don't know what the Money Musk Reliquary is? Well, the Money Musk Reliquary, it's a hard one for me to pronounce that reliquary, it's an eighth century reliquary that was known as being one of the early examples of a house-shaped shrine. Now, we'll put a link down below to all the information about this because it's a fascinating thing if you're interested in history and you wanna learn a bit more about this, but essentially the box of the Lord of the Isles is, a, is meant to be a replica of that Money Musk reliquary box. And so much so that the release of the Lord of the Isles was actually done in the National Museum of Scotland where the Money Musk reliquary sits. So already from the off, we've got something, you know, we've got layers of complexity building here, which make it a really interesting bottle. Now we know about the box, what about the name? Why is it called Lord of the Isles? Well, the Lord of the Isles ruled the Western Isles of Scotland from their council on the Isle of Isla, and it can trace its roots to the MacDonald and MacDougall clans, and Ardbeg obviously was founded by John MacDougall. So there's a bit of a tenuous link to history there, but it still exists. And also, perhaps more importantly, and they do reference this in this amazing book, Ardbeg Heavenly Petered, that the Ardbeg actually owned the IP, and we'll stick this on the screen now, the intellectual property to the term Lord of the Isles, and therefore thought that they would have to use it. Now, let's open up this box and take a look at the whiskey inside it. So, inside the box, we've got two things. We've got the bottle and we've got this scroll. So let's get the scroll out of the way, first of all. So inside here, let's put the box over to one side. We've got the Lord of the Isles scroll and that council that I was talking about, it's all laid out there in great detail and great history. And it sort of explains how this was all traced through, through the lines uh, down to the basically the founding of Ardbeg. And it's in like, it's got a nice little pseudo seal there on it. And it is actually quite a nice sort of piece of history and nicely presented. And this was common throughout all of the bottles that were released from the Lord of the Isle series. Now, if we bring the box back in and take the bottle out, here we go. We can see, let's get you up here. It's a really beautiful dark green bottle as many of the Ardbeg bottles are on the front here bit more information about the Lord of the Isles. And again, on the back, more information about the Lord of the Isles. And on the very bottom of the bottle here, there's a tracking code or like a code that you can use to date the bottle. And this was, was from one of the first releases that came out of this. Now, 
On the front of the label, it says, this rare old malt whiskey is the supreme expression of Ardbeg and it's been slowly matured in oak barrels for 25 years. So this was a core range, 25 year old single malt whiskey. It was actually a 25 to 30 year old whiskey by the time the last editions were coming out, but it was essentially a 1974, 1975 whiskey, and there were some stocks of 1976. And by the time the last release of this came out in 2007, it was actually a 30 plus year old whiskey, but it was always declared as a 25 year old. Now, let's look at the obvious sort of elephant in the room, like the investment potential. So we know that this cost £100 RRP and we saw that on the, the Ardbeg website. Well, in 2006, it was worth about £140 at auction. Well, well done. 2012, worth about £400. Well, yeah, it's going up a bit. 2018, £1,000. 2020, £1,300. And then in 2022, we saw the record price for this bottle of £1,750 hammer price at auction, plus commission, plus insurance, plus shipping, plus all the other bits and bobs in there. If you're investing in whiskey, don't be so short-sighted to think that you've got to make it, you've got to double your money in the first month of owning it. N no, let's go back to that Glenn Farkless video. I explained my reasons in there, why I said that they were probably the best investments of or whiskey investments 2022. They're fundamentally undervalued by any stretch of the imagination for 30 and 40 year old whiskey. The brand at the moment is middling. There's a lot of space for that brand to reposition itself. And you know, yes, this might not happen overnight. It might not happen in three to five years, but it's going to happen. This was a core range bottle of whiskey on the shelves for six years for hundred pounds. And it's now worth up to 1,750 pounds at auction. So. The reason why this would have been a good investment back in 2001, because you've got a lot of fundamental things propping it up. You've got the story about the Lord of the Isles. You've got the fantastic presentation here. You've got exceptional whiskey, and the whiskey itself is really well reviewed. It got 92 points from Whiskey Fun. So there were a lot of things that were good about this bottle of whiskey, but the market seemed to miss, and let's not be let's not beat about a bush here. The the whiskey market wasn't really gathering momentum until sort of say 2014, 2015, and as you can see, that's when you see the jump from 400 pounds to 1,000 pounds between 2012 and 2018. So there it is. It's a core range bottle of whiskey that was available for 100 pounds. Yes, you've had to wait a bit of time, but you've seen a really nice return on it. So it's. It just shows that it can be done. So do you have any core range kings, you know, bottles that were once core range bottles, now discontinued and now are exceptionally priced on the market? Get in the comments below and let me know.